We are back with another edition of the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. All three crew members are back in the house. Welcome back, Dave. Thanks, man. How, was your, back. Back. How was your West Coast trip? It was a long uh, wagon ride back, but okay. we did get back. <laughs> were, you, were you out hiking and all kind of things? I didn't do that. No. You didn't do that? You no, I was it was a business trip, Shock. You know how really? they do it. You know, Dang. <laughs> Kinda put you back in place real quick, didn't he? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dave just happened to be home, I didn't you know? Do it. I didn't do anything out of the West Coast. <laughs> Why is Archer wearing sunglasses? Those lights look awfully bright. Uh, welcome back and Thanks, appreciate man. you uh, for everyone involved bringing them back with Falcons victory. 27 23 win for Atlanta, uh, hold, holding off the Seattle Seahawks in the fourth quarter. We're going to get all into it. By the way, if you didn't know, this is DJ Shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Derek Brackley. Yeah. We're, we're still here, but it's all about Arch. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's right. all about Arch, right. baby. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, here's what we got this week. We're going to talk about some first reactions and the Falcons getting the victory. And then we're going to kind of change it up a little bit. We're going to break down the defense and the offense and kind of look at what the defense did well, what the offense did well. And then we'll kind of shift gears and say what adjustments need to be made for Atlanta to be able to get. A victory as they come back home next week and face the Cleveland Browns. So, guys, Dave, since you, you're fresh with all the knowledge, with all of the sleep and the rest coming back from the yeah, West Coast, we'll go. get your first reactions to the Falcons' victory last week against Seattle. I just think uh, handled their business on the West Coast. We talked about it last week a little bit. My head was uh, much bigger yes. on that thing than it is yes. here. Thankfully, much bigger for sure. um, thankfully, I've gotten back to the regular size. <laughs> I think, but uh, it. You know, those can be tough trips, they, yeah. especially coming off of a loss. How do you handle it? Um, they went up to, to Seattle. They practiced extremely well, and you always hear that. I mean, coaches come in and say, hey, we had a, a really crappy week of practice, and so I don't think we're going to play very well. They did practice well. I had yeah. a chance to be out there quite a bit, be around them. I thought they were not caught up in being in some location they weren't familiar with. They did what they needed to do, get back to the hotel, got their rest, went to their meetings. I just think that the thing that stuck out to me was they handled their business and then it transferred to the field where they came out fast on offense. I think they did some good things adjusting defensively. And so just handle their business, I think, is the first thing that comes to mind. I like me. it. Handle the business. DJ, what did you see from Atlanta? First reactions. You know what? I, I go back to key moments in the game, making the plays that were there. And one moment I think about is late in the fourth quarter, Seahawks are driving, and, you know, they get a big play. You get a holding call from Huge. Brady. And it's one of those instances where it doesn't really show up all the time on the stat sheet or it doesn't show up as uh, this guy did this. But I thought it was a play that was so instrumental because you end up going, they get first and 20, and you end up backing them up, and they don't get nothing out of it. Plays like that, I thought, in, in timely moments, getting the sacks, uh, late in the ball games, putting the pressure on Geno, uh, I thought was huge in the game, especially defensively because that's what it came down to. And I think the biggest thing is, you finished the game. Yeah. I think the first two weeks, you've had opportunities to finish off teams, and for some reason or not, you didn't do it. Well, this week, on the road, in a hostile environment, Arch had his earmuffs in because he was so loud with the 12s, yeah. <laughs> and you found a way to get it done, and uh, I just thought that's, that's monster on the road, too. I thought uh, it was it was great to see Atlanta run the rock, yeah. and that was what I took away from it. Was not only did they run it well, but but if you look at it like Dave at halftime, it was only like what thirty didn't CP have like thirty five yards rushing at halftime, something around there, and then all of a sudden he just breaks out in the second half. But it looked like early on that Seattle was going to run the football. No doubt. And you're thinking, oh, goodness. Like, are they going to control the pace of this game because of the way that they're running the football? But then Atlanta responds right back. But, guys, there's just one play. I know we'll probably get to it at some point. But when CP goes straight hurdle style, Olympic trials for the 110-meter high hurdles, I was impressed. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. But there's been a couple of times, and I talked about it earlier this season, that he looks refreshed. He looks young. He looks fast, physical, like he's got everything. Granted, you know, he's getting rest when he needs it. Tyler Algiers coming in, spelling him on a couple of occasions. But when he comes back in the game, he's running possessed. He's running physical. <laughs> he's running hard. Yeah, sure. And he is being a, a big difference maker. So that was one play that just really stood out to me. They ran the football, but CP saying, no, nah, I'm not going to just settle for a five-yard gain. I'm going to hurl this guy and make this about a 9, 10, 12-yard gain. That was pretty impressive. So let's break it down a little bit. We always – got two quarterbacks here. We always generally start on the offensive side of the ball. Let's start on the defensive side of the ball. So let's talk about some key plays, and I'll start with you here, Arch. Some of the defensive plays that were made – 
Maybe that everybody notices. Maybe that people didn't notice that were key in Atlanta coming up with a victory. Yeah, I think there's probably a number of them. You mentioned, you know, Grady had a big sack late in the football game to force him into a long yardage situation, which Richie ends up coming up with the interception. That's the one we'll probably look at. How about learning the game? How about A.J. Terrell, who has – he asked to be on DK. He told, he told uh, the staff earlier in the week, you know, he's drawn – you know, some pretty good receivers over the first couple of yeah, weeks. Yeah. Uh, he had Michael Thomas, didn't work out that well. He got beat a couple times down close. He had Cooper Cup a number of times last weekend. This weekend it's DK Metcalf. That's what you're going to get when you're in the top corner. And he had had some moments where it didn't work out quite as well for him. But I love the way that he worked on his skill set. I talked to him during the week. I, I mentioned, you know, what, did you, what have you done wrong? He says, I got some things I'm working on. I need to get my hands on the receiver. You go back to the play on the goal line. He's got DK Metcalf. It's bump and run. It's the same play mm -hmm. that he lost uh, against Michael Thomas mm -hmm. to twice, right? Gets his hands up in Metcalf. Metcalf can't get off the jam. He's trying to get to the football. Ball's fairly well thrown from Geno. Incomplete. Yep. And it's just a young player who's considered one of the best at his position that has had a tough start to the season, you know, because he's being targeted a ton. I thought that was a, that was a cool moment for me mm -hmm. in the game. And then defensively, it's more of a team concept. You forced three field goals, and you guys know this is situational football. Win on third down mm -hmm. for on offense or defense. Win in the red zone on offense or defense. Yep. Can you force field goals on third down? They moved the ball. They spent 17 third downs. They forced 17 third down situations. Yep. That means you're get, you're you're bending, 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 fighting, but they won in the red zone. Three red zone turnaways. That's not counting the Richie Grant interception. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. They forced field goals. That's what stuck out to me about defense. You know, to, to piggyback on what Arch talking about, he, he talked about A.J. Terrell. That's one guy who I thought played phenomenal as well, Rashawn Evans. I thought the way he was flying around, I mean, he got his hands on a couple yeah. balls in the ball game. I think he led the team in tackles. But this is the guy that you thought would be the heart and soul of the defense, a physical, just mean guy on the inside. And I thought he played like it. I thought the guys fed off it. And that's what you want from a guy who's coming here on what we've talked about on these prove-it deals. He's got one year to prove that he still can be that guy. And I thought this was a phenomenal game by him. Uh, there were a couple times where, you know, he needed to, you know, carry a guy. He got deep on a, you know, a two Tampa look times and got his – hands on the ball. I mean, he just – I thought he played the position the way he was supposed to and played the way I think DP's brought him in here to be the guy. We talked a lot this offseason leading up to the year about the areas that needed to improve, and one of them was pass rush, right? Mm -hmm. We said we got to get to the quarterback more. And if you look at the first three quarters of the game, it didn't happen. They were pretty good getting after the quarterback the first two games of the season, but the first three quarters either – Gino was getting good pass protection. He was getting the football out of his hands or guys were getting close and they weren't getting him down to the ground. Talk about situational and making a play. Uh, we've talked about total team concept, right? Offense makes a bad mistake, right? Fourth quarter, driving down the field, RPO mesh in the backfield, ball comes out on the ground, mm -hmm. right? Seattle ends up taking over. Like what happens right after that? Very next play, Lorenzo Carter with the sack, right? Mm -hmm. Hadn't had a sack the entire game. Carter gets the sack, kind of sets the tone for the drive. Now, Seattle kind of scratches and claws. They get a few yards. Then there's a holding penalty on the offense, which draws them back. And then Grady Jarrett comes back with the sack. So, really, the pass rush or getting to the quarterback, actually getting down to the ground, was not there through three quarters. Offense makes a mistake. Defense bails them out. Sometimes that's the type of complimentary football you have to have. Pick your teammate up, right? A lot of times when I'm calling a game, Arch, I don't know about you. Sometimes a quarterback will make a throw, and sometimes we want it. We just think quarterbacks have to be perfect with their throws. They're not always going to be perfect. Sometimes a wide receiver has to bail your quarterback out, right? Yeah. You got to make a circus catch sometimes. Sometimes your defense has to bail your offense out when they make a critical mistake. Because I'm telling you, Marcus Mariota was probably the sickest person on the team as they were driving down. Think about it. They don't get the couple of sacks in the interception. Seattle might win the game, mm -hmm. right? They're going now. They score a touchdown. They win the game. No, no. Defense comes up and makes a play. So, it's timely plays, and I like what you talked about too, Dave, Getting forcing the field goals in the red zone. Sometimes it's bend, don't break, right? They gave up some yards. Seattle was able to drive, but when it came down to putting the ball in the end zone, they were able to get those stops. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. 
The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search, so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. So, all right, let's flip it over to the offense, Arch. We just talked about Mariota, still made a couple of mistakes. What stuck out to you as positive offensively that helped them get the victory, but things that they can build on for the rest of the season? Well, I won't. I don't need to go any further into the run game. You went all in on the run game, and that was very evident. Remember, you didn't have your starting left guard playing. Colby Gossett steps in at left guard, and they – dominated the line of scrimmage. You played on Seattle side of the line of scrimmage for the bulk of the game, and the two beneficiaries were your two running backs, Tyler Algier and you mentioned CP. So no reason to go there. Marcus Mariota in this game was brilliant. Okay, you, you're you going to make some mistakes. If the ball touches your hands every game, Shock will tell you we're going to make a mistake or two. Mm -hmm. Decision, throw it away, not throw it away, whatever it is. He made a couple mistakes in the game. He was brilliant throwing the ball under heat because – what Seattle had tried to do is they tried to run dog or blitz the run game because they couldn't stop the run game, so they had to get more people in the gaps to stop the run. So subsequently, RPO stuff where he wanted to throw it, he was under duress because they were coming to stop mm -hmm. the run. He made three throws right, uh, early with air, shock, early Ozeus. with air. He finds Oof. OZ across the field, yeah. a, a, a deep over oh, route man, where he lets it go that's got an arc on it. It looked like Bernie Kosar oh, yeah. throwing the ball. He had an arc <laughs> on it. Beautiful. Perfect throw. How about the throw to Drake London where he's under heat and he throws the back shoulder fade to London and the ball comes out and Drake's only left five yards off the ball. Yeah. When he turns around, he catches it about 20. The ball nearly drops right in his yeah. face mask. And then the back shoulder throw to Kyle Pitts on the wheel route yeah. is a big time throw. So uh, you can say what you. Uh, I thought Mariota was brilliant in the game. There's a number of times he got us in and out of plays. Those are things that you're going to have a uh, tough time determining because you can't hear. You know what the calls are and all those kind of things. But having been around the team, I knew what some of the things they were trying to get sure. to. And he did an amazing job at the line of scrimmage. So I thought Marcus Mariota jumped out at me in this game is huge for the Falcons. I want to go back to the run game for a minute and give that offensive sure. line yeah. some credit. I thought the effort by the offensive line was brilliant. And the one play that you talked about was the hurdle. Yeah. And I broke it down on landifagos.com. And the one thing that I saw that was so critical was Lindstrom was on the backside of that play. And if he doesn't cut off the backside of that play and cut the, the, the linebacker, CP, it's a five-yard game. Mm -hmm. And – Here's what happened. So you get the you, – you, you, you're coming left, and he's – Lindstrom's engaged with the guy on the backside. He's engaged with the guy. Comes off that guy, and he has about two yards to get to that backside linebacker. Cuts that backside – literally lays out and cuts the backside linebacker. That's the effort that you want. Yeah. He could have easily said, okay, I cut off my backside guy, but then he went and got another guy. He went and got a second guy, and he cuts that guy off, and when he cuts that guy off, that's when CP hurdles the guy. Yeah. So that guy's running the alley. He's the backside guy coming to make that play, and he cuts that guy off. The effort, I thought, up front by those guys, they were a bunch of double teams. The CP touchdown was an incredible double team getting back up. They they had ran that wind back kind of play a couple times, and you get, you know, Keith coming back, the fullback coming back to the left side, and this time he comes back, and the linebacker front side is so concerned with getting back on this wind back run that he forgets he has to follow that particular lane right here, and he looks back. And CP sees a huge hole, and he just hits it. Yeah, These are the things that you like to see from this offense. These are the things I like to see from this offensive line that the guys are seeing exactly on the defensive side what's happening, but the effort by the big guys up front are creating some huge lanes to run through, and it's it's fun to watch. I mean, I was excited watching it. <laughs> I can and, see it. I mean, it was <laughs> unbelievable. So yeah. where do we got to go to see this breakdown now? Tell tell the fan out there where they can go. Obviously, they're listening to Falcons Audible right now. Yeah. But where can I go to it's, see Shock's breakdown? It's going to be AtlantaFalcons.com, YouTube, all that. So it's gonna there be, you go. It's going to be fun to watch it. Did you physically do it yourself? Because you were so excited there that I think yeah. you may have done the <laughs> jump yourself. <laughs> that was incredible. Yeah. DJ yeah. may have yeah. cut yeah. the linebacker yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. He I got mean, the block and the run. It was unbelievable. It's, no, it's, good job on that, but, shot. But it's so it's it's so cool to watch because this offensive line, as we all have talked about, has got yeah. a lot of grief. Yep. But to see these sure. guys 
do it in game and see the extra effort to do it for their other guy. And that's one thing that would never show up on the stat sheet. Yeah. It would never show up. Yeah. But when you're watching the game or you're watching the tape and you see it, it makes you excited. It makes that's, you happy, man. That's great 17 stuff. carries, stuff. 141 yards and a touchdown for Cordero Patterson. And uh, he was dominating throughout the course of the game. And, and a lot of the, of the uh, pub needs to go to the offensive line as are well. You, are you guys, real quickly, are you guys stunned as I am? I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm an exclusive club here. This guy played wide receiver at Tennessee. I was, yeah. just, now, I was he, just talking about this. Like, he, he's, he was a kick returner. So doing kick, return, yeah. kick returner has a, a little bit different mentality than just playing wide receiver. Yep. But it doesn't have the mentality of running the rock between the tackles and the national football and taking league. a bunch of hits. Yeah, right. <laughs> How <laughs> many times is he looking for? It yes, and that's what I'm saying. About it. We're, are you guys as stunned as I am yes. with the mentality of him being able to do that? I mean, it's one thing like if you get a guy that was Tyler Algier played linebacker in, in college, sure. right? Yeah. Like those are two both physical positions, sure. yeah. right? But DJ Dave, yeah. we've been around a lot of wide receivers. <laughs> Don't want they don't want no, no kind of contact. They're not even blocking anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't want none of that action. He's trying to run between yeah. no tackles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? But, yes, it's impressive. Um, and what I'd like to see in this game against Seattle was it seemed to me that Arthur Smith made more of a concerted effort because I know this is not like newsflash, but this offense needs to go through CP, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts. Sure. And it looked like early on – Arthur Smith made an effort to get the football to Kyle Pitts, right? Trying to get plays where he's number one in progression, trying to get Marcus Mariota thinking to get the ball into his. I start thinking about like Tom Brady with Rob Gronkowski. Like it was such a weapon, you had to use him. And I feel like Kyle Pitts is that same type of player. He is such a weapon with his size, strength, and athleticism that they've got to continue to try to force feed him. Not to the point to where you're jeopardizing your offense, yeah. but it has the ball has to continue to go through those three players. I, I think Let he's me, so conscious of it, too. I heard him talking to you yeah. about it, Arch, about the fact that our offense works better when Kyle has the ball in his hand. And then at the end of his comment, he says to you, well, we got to get him in the end zone. I think it's so critical that he's conscious of – we got to make sure we feed this guy. Yeah. But when we're in the red zone, we got to make sure we continue to feed it. You know what else, too, though, is Kyle has got to be able to accept. I think it, you you superficially say, yeah, I want the ball. But there's some, some obligations when you want the football. And so that means you've got to be crisp on your routes. You've got to give me something as a quarterback that I can read to get you the rock. I think Kyle's been working on that. I, I said it last week, I think I think he's a victim of his own success from a year ago. He was so dominant and kind of burst on the scene that maybe just thought the talent would get it done. You guys know as well as I do, in this league, everybody's talented. Yep. So you better work on your craft. Yep. And he's still got some work to do. I mean, he, he came out the wrong angle. They had a sail route on on the Falcon sideline where you got a go route outside to clear – and he's got an inside technique defender. When mm -hmm. he comes out of the break, you can't go the sideline. You yeah, can't flatten you go that off. An angle. You got to take the deep angle. Yep. That's where Marcus threw the ball. And so it looks like Marcus overthrew him on the play. No, Kyle took the wrong angle coming out. If he takes the right angle, that may be a 70 yard touchdown. Yep. Yeah. And yep. so that's about working on your craft. I think Kyle has embraced that. I think that's why you saw him, yes, concerted effort maybe to get him the ball, but I think a little bit more a heightened sense of urgency on his part sure. to be a better player and to give my quarterback something I can, he can read so I can get him the rock. So I think it's a two way go. Similar example to Drake London's touchdown. Gets a little pressure. And he doesn't just haul butt all in there. He kind of throttles in there, and market puts it on him. I mean, just a great understanding and feel yeah. of the game right there from a young rookie and his quarterback. And yep. that's similar to what we just talked about with Kyle. Kyle has that too. There's just times that they're working on it, and he continues to get better with it. Yep. So those 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 two will continue to evolve. I should say three with Marcus Mariota too, getting on the same page with the angles and everything coming out of routes, the back shoulder throws that you guys talked about. One more quick thing that I'll talk about from this game, and then we'll move forward. Another big big reason they come away with a victory: penalties. Yeah. Two for fifteen yards. Yeah. If you don't shoot yourself in the foot, you got a great chance to win the game. Even though we talked about a couple of turnovers that could have hurt them. They ran the football. They didn't shoot themselves in the foot with penalties. Those two things are huge as well. One last thing that, that came to mind, and we were talking about Marcus Mariota and his value, and I think one thing that's kind of kind of going under the radar or you know, people don't realize is how much he controls the backside end or he controls the frontside end when they're running the zone read or, 
or when they're running a simple outside zone and he has to neck it out the backside and he holds that backside in just enough so that maybe you can have the cutback. That stuff, I think, is something that fans have to pay attention to because the simple fact that he has that threat mm-hmm. makes the run game go as two. Absolutely. Yep. It, it, pass protection and run blocking. Mariota has as much to do with that success as anybody on the field yep. because of his faking, because of his innate ability to create out of something, out of nothing. That slowed them down, and it's allowed offensive linemen to get on their yep. block. Get that backside in to just hesitate just a little bit because yep. of the threat of him coming out the backside. All right, guys, let's switch gears. Let's talk about the Cleveland Browns. Atlanta Falcons back at home facing Cleveland. This is not the Baker Mayfield nor Deshaun <laughs> Watson Cleveland Browns. This is the Jacoby Brissett oh, okay. Cleveland <laughs> Browns. You're going to go Tim Couch on me. Okay, okay, no, Tim Couch. Not going Tim back Couch that far. Going? No, hey, no okay. Bernie Kosar or anything. None of those guys. <laughs> I got the Kosar, man. Yeah, earlier, right? It was twice in one minute. One episode. How does that work? All right, Jacoby Brissett, but we do have two pretty good running backs in the backfield in oh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Good. So I don't want to sit here and say that this is going to be more of a defensive focused game, but Cleveland's going to try to run the football. Jacoby Brissett is not your Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady that's going to light you up through the air. Yes, he's capable. They want to try to win by controlling the football and running it with these two big horses. So, Dave, what's going to be the focus for Atlanta coming back home? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what personnel group. And I don't know if how closely people are paying. I know you guys were against the Rams. Atlanta played a big nickel. They went with Eric Harris in as the third linebacker and or fourth linebacker, depending on whether you think we're running 4-3 four, or 3-4. Three, four. But he was the extra guy on the field in the middle part. This week, they went to a bigger part. And it was Troy Anderson was on the field. And now they were playing essentially playing 4-3. They walked uh, uh, Lorenzo Carter up on the line of scrimmage. They played a kind of a four-down look with him being that fourth-down mm-hmm. linebacker. And then you had the three linebackers in, in behind with Evans, Walker, and Troy Anderson, the rookie, on the field. So it'll be interesting to see now. So if I'm watching tape and I'm in Cleveland, okay, what am I going to get? I'm probably anticipating a little bit bigger group right. on the field mm-hmm. to stop the run. Yep. Um, screen game, play action, yep. mm-hmm. all those things are going to get into play. So not only is the front seven going to have to play well, the back four are going to have to be really cognizant of not getting too hungry to come up and stop the run game because they do have some guys who can go over the top. David Njoku is, is, a line, is, a, is a tight end that played at Miami – it's a talented dude. Yeah, he yeah. not not Kyle Pitts, but maybe Kyle Pitts Jr. to a certain extent. He's got that kind of skill set. Big body guy that can run, catch the football. He's a problem. He got a touchdown this last weekend. Yeah. Um, so the the defense gonna be a big focus because it, it kind of seems a little similar too. Jacoby Brissett might be a guy that's going to show you a little bit of bootleg action too because of all of the success that they have in the run game. So maybe they start to use a little bit of that in the backfield. So eye discipline is going to be really important for not only the defensive line, but but the, the second two levels, the linebackers and the secondary. DJ, what sticks out? Maybe on the offensive side of the ball, what things need to happen for Atlanta to continue to, to put another win in the win column? Well, first, you, you, we hope Miles Garrett is all right. Obviously, yeah, absolutely. In a, absolutely. In an accident. Yeah. You, you, you never know what you're going to get, if he's going to play or not play. Uh, but that's the number one thing that comes to mind. I mean, up front, they get after you. They they have one of the best defensive lines. They You know, it starts with him. And you don't know if you're going to see him, but either way, that is the number one deal is protecting your quarterback, being good in the run game, but being able to being able to have guys that understand, okay, where this guy's lined up. And we talked about Aaron Donald for, you know, I don't know how long Miles Garrett's in that same same kind of vein if he, if he plays. But I think you continue to do what you've done in the first three ball games. You've had a you've been able to run the football, you've been able to get Marcus on the perimeter, be able to use his athleticism but then also use the weapons that you have around you. And I think that's important in a ball game like this because if they go out and do what they've been doing the last few games, which is run the football, your possessions are going to be limited. So you got to make sure those possessions count and you got to make sure you're putting yourselves in positions to win. So this is an offensive game similar to what you, you've seen in the past. Is you got to be absolutely efficient when you have the ball. Let me ask you guys a question here as to decidedly aggressive early in the game offensively. Mm-hmm. What do you what? How do you feel like that affected Seattle, and how does it affect now Cleveland moving forward because of the way Atlanta came out? You know, vertical shots. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So maybe it ends up loosening them up a little bit, and then Atlanta was able to kind of take advantage of that and start pounding them right away. But obviously, we know what happened in the game against Seattle. They saw CP run all over the place. Yeah. So what is Cleveland's defense? What's their number one goal going to be? 
this guy's not going to run for 140 yards against us, right? So they're probably going to have some packages, whether it's bigger personnel, whether it's attacking the line of scrimmage, playing more man coverage. So if that happens, what ends up being the counter punch from Arthur Smith? If they're going to start to commit to try to slow down CP, is it now more play action, DJ? Is that what we're going to see? Because those are the type of things like – that's what game planning is all about. Yeah. They're going to turn on the tape and they're going to see a couple of games this year where Cordell Patterson went nuts. And they're going to say, that's what Atlanta wants to try to do to us. How do we counteract that? Well, let's stack the box. So Arthur Smith's going to maybe do a little bit more play action. And then maybe we take some more of those shots early down the field to Drake London and Kyle Pitts if they're going to be bearing down on the run game. That's the chess match you got to you gotta figure out in the ball game. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think that's why yep. – these coaches are who they are and why they're in the National Football League because you got to be able to adjust in the game. Yeah. And you just talked about the ability to, be able to run the football. You showed that last week. But then you also showed the ability to get Kyle Pitts the football. You showed Drake London has shown first three ball games why he was number eight pick. I mean, so it's pick your poison with this offense right now, I believe, is which one do you want to take away, which guys uh, can hurt you. And I think either way, Arthur Smith will have a great plan. He's yeah. done it in the first three ball games. He's found a way – to make this offense successful. Well, let's flip the script on the other side now. Uh, we saw Seattle have success, as you mentioned, Rack, running the ball early. Yeah. Yeah. We had real problem with our edge integrity in the run game. Ogundeji came down hard a couple times. A couple other guys came down hard, provided that cutback lane. Penny got off to a great start, right? We know Chubb and Hunt are coming, right? They're looking at the tape. They're going to say, wait a minute, we can get, we can get that same stuff in excess. That's what we do. So – I thought Dean did a really good job of dialing in. Let's give credit where credit's due. They ran the ball for about 50 yards in the first quarter, and at that point the the run game became a little bit of a a, a secondary thing. Yeah. I think Walker had a jet sweep where he wound around and yeah. got about 15 yeah. or 20 yards. Other than that, they didn't do anything in the run game. Give Pease credit for getting those guys di- dialed back in to play the techniques mm-hmm. properly, yeah. but certainly get an extra guy in there to stop that away, and, and they had to go to the short passing attack. Also, I'm looking on tape. I'm Cleveland. I saw Casey Hayward peeking in the backfield. Yeah. Play action fake. He peeks in the backfield. Tight yep. ends behind him. Yep. If that's in Joku, it's a touchdown. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they know that too. So if I'm kind of looking, you know, doing being the devil's advocate and looking mm-hmm. on the other side, these are things Cleveland's seeing, and it's something we're going to have to brush up. And you, you hear your uh, Arthur talk about it all the time. That stuff we have to fix. We have to get that brushed up, right? So those are areas Atlanta's going to have to work on for this week against Cleveland. You got, yeah. you got a guy in Mari Cooper who is a really good route runner. So mm-hmm. got to be aware of him. All right, Dave. So last question to you, because you were with the team as they were gone for, you know, call it what, eight or nine days. What do you feel like the, the, the attitude, the mojo, the energy level of the team is going to be now that they're going to be back home all week and then playing in front of their home fans? Yeah, I think it was important to get a win. I, I talked to Arthur on our coaches show for Sports Radio 92.9 The Game yesterday and, and talked to him about, you know, you've been talking about things. You've been close. Uh, they're playing well for the bulk of games. How important was it for you to get a win? Yeah. And he said, yeah. He says, that's all the stuff we talk about and it's fun to coach this team and we're, we're working on this and we've got this going and we did this well for three quarters. None of that means anything if you can't win mm-hmm. and ultimately you got to win. So I think what it does is just put some credibility behind everything that's being said. So now we can say, well, we did this and look what happened. Okay. We didn't commit the penalties you're yep. talking about. Yep. We got red zone stops. Yep. We ran the rock. Yep. This is what happens yep. to me. Large chunk of credibility goes in there. I think when you watch these first three ball games, the one thing that comes to mind for me, if I'm a fan, is I want to come see this team play on Sunday. I think watching these team over the first three ball games, be in every ball game, have a chance to win every ball game, mm-hmm. and come out like already said, the credibility of actually winning the ball game and finish it, it gives the fans something to be excited about. You think about that that building when New Orleans was here, how it was rocking, the excitement of it. I think that excitement is still there. You look at all the things that you can be excited about and all of all the guys that are on this team, it makes this team fun and want to come see. I didn't get a chance to watch the Seattle game live, so I watched it back on tape. And then as soon as I stopped it, the first thing that came to my mind was not necessarily a pretty game. Even looking at some of the things our producer put in here, you know, Mariota still made a couple of mistakes. Defense gave up some yards and everything. Mm. But I went back to my playing days, and I'm sure you guys can say, and if you're a fan of the Falcons or if you're a fan of football, just remember this always, okay? 
It is hard to win in the <laughs> National Football League. Number one. Yeah. It is hard to win on the road yeah. in the National Football League, right? So it's not always going to be a quarterback in a passing game throwing for 375 yards and running for 125 yards. Like, it's not always going to be pretty. But guess what? You take the wins when you get them. No doubt. Yeah. doesn't matter what it looks like sometimes. No you take them wins when you get them. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. Make sure you watch DJ's breakdown because I'm going to go watch it because yeah. he got me excited. Did he get you excited about it too? <laughs> AtlantaFalcons.com are all the different avenues that you find Atlanta Falcons content. I'm sure you'll be able to find DJ's breakdown. And then make sure you keep coming back to watch us on the Falcons Audible presented by yeah. AT&T. Make sure you sure. like, subscribe, review, Spotify, iTunes, AtlantaFalcons.com, and YouTube, all your different avenues that you get your podcast material. Once again, this is the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. See you next time. Shocked to use the stiff arm. Did you go the stiff arm? <laughs>